So wait. Yeah, I, I still can't believe you guys do that. Like, whatever. All right. Um, when we're talking about a wave, a wave is going to be defined as a periodic disturbance in a substance that moves energy from one point to another. A periodic <laughs> disturbance that moves energy from one point another to another um, talking about waves there are going to be three categories of waves that we're going to be discussing and basically today our uh, goal is to identify those three categories of waves and identify the different properties of waves that they exhibit so our first set of transverse waves transverse waves. A transverse wave is a wave in which the particles of the medium move perpendicularly to the direction of motion of the energy. A wave in which particles of the medium of the medium move perpendicularly perpendicularly to the direction of motion of the iron. All right, reading that definition, we might have some context clues, we might have some preconceived notions, but we definitely need some kind of definition for the word medium. Um, in this case, for waves, <laughs> A medium is simply the substance through which a wave propagates. So if we're talking about sound, the wave medium is air. If we're talking about water waves, water is the medium. If we're talking about um, uh, somebody got an example of another wave. Um, that sound, light waves are a little bit different. They don't really have a medium. That, that's very, very different. Um, if we're talking about, um, sure, a Lay's potato chip, the wave is the chip, it, or the medium is the chip. Um, if we're talking about a stadium wave, what would be the, uh, the, people. the people would be the medium, okay? If we're talking about a wave, what would be the medium? Your hand. So while you may have been thinking this wasn't fitting the scientific definition of wave, it really does. It's a periodic disturbance in which um, you're moving energy from one point to another. So it does fit the scientific definition. Right? Transverse waves. So we've got a medium. It's the stuff through which a wave moves. Um, drawing a transverse wave, this is the one we can most easily visualize because it's our nice sine or cosine curve. Um, where the dotted line in this case represents the rest position of your medium. So in the absence of a wave, your medium would lay nice and flat on the dotted line. In the presence of a wave, it looks like the sine curve. Okay? A um, few points that you'll recognize. First of all, the top, crests. The bottom, troughs. Okay? So crest and trough are the maximum and minimum locations on a wave. The maximum and minimum locations on a wave. Next up is amplitude. The amplitude is the height of the wave. Height of the wave. And I want to be very clear about this. Um, because every year somebody screws it up. On the test, I'm going to have a question where there's a picture a lot like this. I'm going to ask you to label the amplitude of the wave. The answer to that is the amplitude of the wave is like from here 
to the crest. So from the rest position to the crest. Or you can draw from the rest position to the trough. Either way, it's the displacement of the, uh, or sorry, it's the maximum displacement of the particles at, uh, of the wave. So distance, rest, crest, or distance, rest to trough. It is not from here to here. Okay? Every year, somebody marks it. Don't be that person. Okay? This would be double the amplitude. Okay? So, distance or displacement from rest to its maximum position. In equations, we will see amplitude as A and measured in meters. Measured in meters. Okay. For a transverse wave, amplitude is also a measure of the amount of energy carried by the wave. The greater the amplitude, the more energy is being carried. A measure of energy. All right, questions on amplitude, crest, or trough? No, no. All right, next one up, wavelength. The wavelength of a wave is simply the distance between two identical points on the wave. As ninth graders, you probably got a definition of it's crest to crest or it's trough to trough. Well, it is. This is a wavelength. This is a wavelength, but that's a very uh, confined definition because this is also a wavelength. This is also a wavelength. Okay. What matters is that you're picking two identical points. Now with ninth graders, we gave the definition of crest to crest or trough to trough because without it, ninth graders would say, oh, two identical points. Here they are. This is a wavelength. No, that's half a wavelength. Okay. These points aren't identical because their slopes are not the same. Okay, a uh, one's coming down, one's going up. So if you want to refine that definition to be the distance between two identical uh, slopes, with the exception of the slope being zero for crest and trough, yeah, that would work. So the distance between two identical points on a wave. Okay, um, mathematically, we use the Greek symbol lambda to represent wavelength, and we measure it in meters. Okay, I really can't draw the next few because they have more to do with time than with uh, two-dimensional space, um, but we'll go ahead and get the definitions here as well. First one up is frequency. And frequency is the number of waves that pass a single location in a set amount of time. The number of waves that pass a location in an amount of time. An equation, that would be F. Um, I draw it as a super curly F. I'm not 100% certain why. I probably read it like that somewhere and it's stuck. Um, and it's measured in number of events over time or seconds. Now, rather than just say number of events per second every time, uh, we actually translated this to hertz, which is HZ. And one hertz is one event per second. Two hertz would be two events per second, etc. Okay. Um, since we're talking frequency, we'll also put period in here. The period of a wave is the amount of time it takes one wave to pass a single point. The amount of time for a wave to pass a single point.
Anybody see a possible relationship between frequency and period here? Okay, both have to do with time, absolutely. Anything more? All right, as the period gets bigger, frequency goes down. So they've got an inverse relationship. All right, so in an equation, period is going to be T, which we've actually seen before. Uh, thank you, Kepler. Kepler gave us that T squared over R cubed equals T squared over R cubed. He used T as the period of a planet for how long it took to go around uh, the sun. Period T is still period here um, in seconds. And it was pointed out that they have an inverse relationship here. Well, that's actually exactly what they've got. T is equal to 1 over the frequency. Questions on any of these definitions? So wave speed. Wave speed. This is simply the rate at which a wave moves from one point to another. The rate at which a wave moves from one point to another. To another. Okay. Um, Really, we've actually already seen the units that are going to calculate wave speed. Wave speed is equal to, well, let's see here, distance, which is distance, wavelength. Wavelength is distance, and time. Hertz is time. It's one over time. So frequency times wavelength is going to be wave speed. Okay. So what we find, and you saw this with the slinky, is that as I increase the frequency, the wavelengths get shorter because the speed of the wave has to be the same. Now, if you didn't believe it from the slinky, the other good example for this is music. You go to a band concert. You hear uh, them playing, um, and the tuba and the flute both play at the same time. Now, if frequency dictated the wave speed, then the flute's high-frequency notes would move faster than the tuba's low-frequency notes. Meaning that in order for them to get to you at the same time, the tubas had to play earlier than the flutes did. And you have to synchronize every set of notes so that the lower instruments play before the higher instruments. And then the waves travel to you in the audience, and it depends on where you're sitting. You can only synchronize those uh, spots for one spot in the audience, because if you're closer to one or the other, based on if you're on the left or right side of the auditorium, one of the sound waves gets to you faster than the other. So because we don't have to write music to account for different speeds of different sounds, we know that all sounds travel at the same speed, meaning that the thing that matters isn't the frequency, but the properties of the medium that they're traveling through. Good with that idea? Yes? All right, next up. New type of wave, longitudinal. No. <laughs> I understand why you gave a weird answer now. <laughs> Velocity. Everybody good with that idea. That frequency doesn't change the speed of a wave, but rather the medium does, and that as frequency increases, just the wavelength decreases. Good? Okay. All right, longitudinal waves. A longitudinal wave is a wave in which particles of the medium move parallel to the direction of motion of energy. Uh, waves in which particles of the medium Move parallel to direction of motion of energy. So this one's a little harder to actually like draw, and I'm going to just stick with a slinky example for how it's drawn. So drawing my slinky, I've got portions that are spread out, portions that are more compressed.
Okay, and I don't have crests or troughs. I don't have crests or troughs because they're not moving, changing their height. They're moving closer and further apart from each other. Okay, so you'll notice, and hopefully my drawing translated well, this segment and this segment and this segment, the loops should look closer together. Yes? Okay, those segments are what we call compressions. They roughly translate to the longitudinal version of a crest. We'll see that I, uh, we can create crests of a wave with a compression of a wave uh, next Wednesday. Here, don't be gone next Wednesday. You will be upset. No, no. It did definitely fire. No, we're not going to do the fire didgeridoo that day. Uh, that's also sometime next week, though. All right. Um, these sections where there are fewer part or fewer loops per segment, those are what we're going to call rare factors. And they roughly translate to uh, troughs. Okay. Right. Questions about parts of a longitudinal wave? So in a transverse wave, particles in the medium, if energy is going this way, particles in the medium are going like this. In a longitudinal wave, if energy is going like this, particles in the wave are doing this. I feel like this is some kind of dance move. Uh, Jello is actually in the next one. Jello is going to get what we call a surface wave. A surface wave combines the motion of a transverse and longitudinal wave um, to produce a more ovular motion of wave particles. Um, combines the motion of transverse and longitudinal waves Um, to create a more ovular or ovular, however you want to say it, to create more ovular motion. So one of the best examples, I mean, Jell is a decent example here because the Jell wiggles both back and forth and up and down. So if you picked one point on the surface of the Jell, it would go back, both back and forth and up and down when you get the Jell to wiggle. Um, so that works. Typically, I go with the example of water um, because we can see a little bit more of the motion. So let's get a wave here. And I want to be uh, clear. I'm talking about a water wave, not current. Current is a different idea because current is where you're actually moving whole systems of water particles from one point to another. A water wave is when just the energy is being transferred. Okay. So this would not be a good example for, say, a creek or a river. It would be a good example for, say, a pool or a pond that is not, like, cycling water a out. A wave pool, perhaps. Yeah, actually, that's a really good example. Um, so anybody fish? Yes. Bobbers or just, like, ice fish, fly fish? It depends. Okay. So let's put a bobber in our wave here. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Yes, that's demonstrating what we're talking about. So when you go fishing with a bobber, here's your fishing line, and say a wave goes by, maybe it's because a boat splash or went by or something, the bobber doesn't really change position. It moves up and down, it moves back and forth, but unless there's a current to your water, it stays in roughly the same position. So it's gonna move forward, it's gonna move up, it's gonna move back, and depending on the amplitude of the wave and the frequency of the wave, we change between, I mean, maybe we could even get a perfect circle if we match them just right, but we're gonna get some kind of oval motion here, okay? This is seen whenever we have um, a wave being created between two mediums. 
So like where water meets air, we can see this kind of wave. Um, where the ground meets air, we see this kind of wave for earthquakes. Where jello meets air, we can see this kind of wave. Okay, so good examples would be earthquakes. Other good examples would be water waves. Um, questions on any of these notes? I moved.